Hello and welcome back and today we want to continue looking at the D-Link DWR2101 5G SIM card and Wi-Fi 6 mobile router. We've already done a hardware review, we've done some performance testing um, around the south coast of England and now we're going to look at the software and in today's video we are looking at two different kinds of user interface. We're going to be looking at the desktop UI um, and we're accessing it via Chrome on a Windows PC and later on in the video, we are going to be looking at uh, the mobile app from D-Link for interacting with your mobile router. Now, it's worth highlighting that you don't need really to use either of these tools. A number of the settings and functions can be conducted from the very front of the user interface. If we make our way into my photos from earlier, um, we can have a look and straight away see that the user interface of this device can be interacted with quite, quite easily. There's the, some of the speed test stuff we did earlier on, and there's lots of configuration options all built within. But a lot of you like to utilize a desktop. You wanna do stuff with port, port forwarding, changing some of the NAT settings, allowing users, MAC addresses, that sort of thing. And they, this is where the browser interface is useful. You have to create an account with the device. By default, it's just the word admin, admin, but it will invite you to change it and make sure you log in via the usual home IP 192.168.0.1. So if you log into the device, there are languages available. Straight away, it gives you this user interface here. Now, although this video is sort of a review, it's very hard to review a thing like this because it is fairly standard. What I will say off the bat straight away though, is even though this is a mobile router, it gives a lot of configuration and control. I'm not currently in a 5G covered office while recording this video, so as you can see, 5G has been deactivated, but 4G is activated. Lots of information with regard to the setup, the configuration, who I'm with, what I'm using, all of them are available here on screen. There's lots of configuration options for us to go through. So straight away, you can go in immediately into the setup wizard where you can set up a lot of your Wi-Fi and network connectivity with a step-by-step -step guide. But as I mentioned, the majority of the settings on this router can be used straight out of the box. You just bung your SIM card in and you're ready to rock. I'm using an O2 SIM for those that care and it is a 5G SIM and it is utilizing unlimited data plan. I didn't have to change anything. I stuck the SIM inside and it automatically set up ready to go in four minutes. I didn't even have to message O2 or send a text or any of that. It was good to go straight off the bat, but that's more about them. APN settings will allow you to change a number of the key background settings. And again, that will depend quite a lot on the network provider. This device arrives unlocked and you can create new ones and edit some of those APN setups quite easily. There's lots of information on the SIM. I'm not going to go into those too much, obviously for security reasons, but you can do lots of other bits and bobs as well, which I'll touch on later on in the SMS section. You've got SSID settings where you can change a lot of the configuration options of each of the um, frequencies, the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz frequencies. Do bear in mind, obviously, the performance is higher on 5 gigahertz, but some devices do not support it. And there is that beautiful inclusion of WPA3, something that is surprisingly still not more commonplace in modern routers right now. We're still seeing a lot of mesh routers, static wired routers, and mobile routers that still don't have WPA3, but there's lots of configuration options there. And right now I'm utilizing the five uh, gigahertz frequency, but the system is still purporting both frequencies if I want it. So again, you can flick between them and because I'm using a device that supports both, I can see them both and you can make sure that say, for example, you are using the 2.4 gigahertz frequency for surveillance cameras, some older IP and OnViv cameras need 2.4, then you can set a completely different network connection, security protocol, bandwidth control, password, everything in that SSID separate in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. I think that goes up to about uh, 500, they report a maximum 574 megabits per second. So that's uh, 57 megabytes per second, give or take on the 2.4 gigahertz, and on the 5, it's 1200 megabits per second, or 120 um, megabytes per second. WPS sends, if you can use that one touch, it's all available there, and you can even set up a customized pin. Mac filters, you can say certain devices that you do or don't want connected, you can make sure their Mac addresses are featured here on the list, uh, and also assign them priority sometimes as well. 
a lot of the, the WAN settings, utilizing the port or utilizing a lot of the configuration options are readily available. There's lots of configuration here, but it gets even better uh, when you start looking at a lot of the analytical information there in the background where you want to know what's happening with your system, how much data it's consuming, and there's even speed tests built into the device itself. NAT settings for security allow you to create things like DMZ to make sure that you can have a more free-flowing um, area of data in and out of your router, but bear in mind it does come with its own security problem. The demilitarized zone IP setup can be problematic. So it's advised to not really play with that unless you know what you're doing. Same goes for port settings. A number of you that might want to take advantage of allowing larger or more free-flowing packets of data between certain devices and certain sources, you can configure a lot of the port forwarding actions here directly from within the web browser as well as on the mobile app that I'll show you later on. Firewall settings allow you to uh, change a number of those settings, add a lot of firewall uh, security credentials all built into the device that you can set up. Sorry about that, we've got a noisy old seagull here. Um, then you've got the LAN configuration settings which you can adapt on the fly, which is fantastic. Something I uh, mentioned in previous videos, uh, mobile routers that have gigabit LAN ports, particularly more modern 5G and Wi-Fi 6 ones are not as common as you think. And if you're thinking of getting a router at an airport uh, when you're traveling or if you're thinking of getting a mobile router anyway, spring the extra few quid and get one that's got an Ethernet port and double check it's a gigabit LAN because a lot of these companies, and not including this unit by the way, do um, add a LAN port, an Ethernet RJ45, but it's not uh, a gigabit connection and you can lose out. Luckily the one on this one is a gigabit LAN, that's why I bought it. Then you've got the SMS sense where you can send a text message directly from the user interface using the SIM card inside. And again, it's a bit rudimentary. And I've got to say, we will take a glance at this on the mobile app. It's not much better than that. But again, you can add a text message and send it if you like. Uh, you can also receive SMS as well. Firmware updates, not as intuitive as I would have liked. I kind of wanted it to periodically check online, as you can see there. But it wasn't as fluid as I would have liked. I would have wanted something like this to be automated, um, but it wasn't. Um, account configuration, obviously, is setting up your D-Link account to access this device remotely. And finally, you've got the about settings about the device itself, factory reset, and logging out. So a lot of the options that one would expect from a router um, uh, are very, very present here on this mobile router, and they've kept it quite straightforward. I'm, this definitely is a lot more user-friendly than some of the Netgear routers I've looked at before, and I know I keep jumping on the Netgear M1 Nighthawk mobile router. The configuration options on that, although detailed, it had to be said, were still messy in a number of ways, and threw a lot of information at you, and a lot of the time I didn't feel like the settings were being saved, um, and it would periodically um, log me out something I didn't really enjoy. Luckily, that isn't happening with this D-Link, but it is still early days. So now, what I'm gonna do is switch over to the mobile arrangement. It's gonna be a bit shorter, so let's log out and switch over to the mobile app. Right, so here we are on the desktop of the D-Link application, EZ5. This is the mobile app available for iOS and Android to interact with your uh, DWR 5G and Wi-Fi 6 router. And now straight away, the first thing I'll say off the bat is this app is pretty thin on the ground in terms of design. It's really just a browser window um, in an app form. If you do log into the router using that IP uh, the 192.168.0.1 you will see the same thing on the web browser as you see here on the app it's really just a more convenient one click way to make your way into this router but what I will add is the ability to control the router with your mobile phone on the app is still pretty damn good obviously looking at the connection strength and stuff like that is always going to be handy same thing with going into the statistics it's just nice to be able to do that but what really stood out for me is the idea that I can configure firewall settings, I can configure ports, connections, I can configure the Ethernet LAN connection, all utilizing this app. I can go into port forwarding, I can change all of that. It's a responsive app. I'm not going to say it's going to win any design awards, but I will say that it's nice to be able to configure this mobile router with the app on the fly. And of course, if you are using a mobile data sim, if you look at the majority of um, data sims these days, not just 5G, 
you'll always notice that they come with a bunch of text and calls and it's nice to be able to access that phone inbox to be able to send and receive text messages on your phone from that sim and actually use some of those inclusive text and minutes although almost certainly you've got unlimited of both with your sim card you can pretty much do everything you can upgrade the firmware there you can change a lot of the ap settings a lot of the sim information too if you need to get the phone number you can retrieve it from those settings at the top you can even change a lot of the um wi-fi connections inside remember there are um, i believe it's four times uh, two times two on the 5G frequencies inside. And I think the Wi-Fi sits as well. There's a couple of antennas. So there's a lot of configuration options there that you can change on the mobile app on the fly. And of course, this can be accessed quite easily via these different methods, WPS as well. It's just nice to have this option. Is it gonna you know, wow many people? Of course not. It's a really rudimentary application in terms of design. It's just the features that really stand out for me there. And it's just nice to be able to access a lot of this stuff without the web browser. Um, one thing I will add on their site, however, is this is now probably the fifth or sixth um, Wi-Fi, route, uh, sorry, uh, mobile router that I've utilized in the last year. I've, you know, got a couple from airports when I was over in Taiwan back in 2019 uh, for some of the Computex stuff. And then of course, since then I've been using the Netgear a couple of times, I've been using some other mobile routers. And with all of them, one of the things I've always found when utilizing them is I can only use the app. And I'm quite happy that this allows me to configure and access this uh, mobile router. One, with the mobile app, as you see here on screen. Then, of course, using the desktop, using a web browser. And then don't overlook the fact that that system has the LCD panel on top of the device. So again, three different ways to configure the device on the fly, which cannot be overlooked and for me although i have labeled this a review and it's more of an overview and guide than a review but nevertheless this is winning points for me definitely not design points certainly but in terms of functionality features and ease of use and responsiveness i can't fault this because it's doing everything it needs to do it's doing it quick and it's making it chewable and user friendly even for a bit of a network junkie like me thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this do check out the review in the description a link in where we did a full breakdown speed test and everything we've done for our videos in a far more analytical and written and pictorial form so do check those out click like if you've enjoyed this video click subscribe to learn more and do take advantage of the free advice section over on nas compares i want to help you guys with your data and your networking and although i'm not going to respond you know within a day or so it's free advice it's impartial it's unbiased and i just want to help people get connected thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time